Hello beautiful people, it's me Tabo and welcome to another session of Coding for Superheroes. So today we're going to be learning a little bit about the matrix system. Just to keep it simple, I will be teaching you how to get the direction of a mesh so that we can be able to shoot projectiles according to the forward direction of our object. We will learn how to access the normal information inside of a mesh and we will do an illustration where I will use a line mesh and I will assign it the position values of our normal and then give the object a rotation and then you will see how the line mesh will follow the rotation of our object according to the normals. So just to illustrate it, I will just show you this example right in front of us. As you can see this green line that is inside of the cube, that is the line mesh that we're using and that represents our normal and the one cube on the left is rotating and then the other one on the right is mimicking the rotation of the one on the left it does not have a rotation of its own it's just merely rotating according to the quaternion values of the one on the left so when i click then you can see that i'm shooting projectiles and these projectiles are being shot in the forward position of our object so now we're just going to go through the code and i'm going to show you how all of this was done this is a simple illustration of how to achieve this but from here on then you can imagine how this can open up a lot of possibilities you can be able to shoot projectiles with any particular object you can also create movements and be able to move in the forward direction of your object so now we have more control of how we want our object to move and if there's any particular follow-up any animations that we want to create according to the direction of our object then we'll be able to do it so without further ado let's just jump right in and get coding okay in front of me i've got our base code as usual so this time I'm just going to be using just these five things. It's some post-processing effects using our orbit control and our main library from the three master folder. So, okay, here we've got our renderer and we set the size according to our windows inner width and inner height. We set the pixel aspect ratio and then we append that to our document body. We create a camera perspective. 45 according to this aspect ratio window divided window in a width divided by a window in a height and we're going to make the near clip one and the far clip to a thousand so this is the usual stuff that i have for every tutorial that i create if you are a newbie and you do not understand 3js and still need to learn the fundamentals then please follow the link in the video description to my beginner tutorials where you can learn the fundamentals of 3js if you do not know how to create post processing effects then you can also follow another link which will lead you to a tutorial on the basic post processing effects okay so now let's just uh, begin coding okay we've got our basic setup so now we can begin with the juicy stuff okay so underneath here we're gonna create our geometry our material and then our mesh we're going to create a box geometry and then we're going to assign it a mesh standard material we'll give it a color blue and we're going to give it these value for our emissive and we're going to turn on wireframe to true after that then we'll make it into a mesh and then add the mesh to our scene okay so now we're going to create a an array called normal indices and then we're going to create a variable called normals now this variable is going to hold the information about our normals and this information will be in an array as you can see here i was doing a test uh, just to see all the information inside of our array then after that then we're going to create a for loop and we're going to iterate through our normals array and inside we're going to create variables which will be referencing the position x y and z of our normal and then after that then we're going to take that information and inside of our normal indices, we're going to push a new vector 3, giving it these values that we just derived from our normals. Okay, and then second, we're going to create a line material. And then we're going to give it this color. And then second, we're going to create a line geometry. And this will be equal to a new 3 buffer geometry. And then we're going to set the points using our mesh's position. And then we're going to use these normals, which will be in this index index 16 now how did i get to this index well i had to actually go through all of them in order to find out which one is the forward position so we're setting it from the meshes position which is in the center position which would be zero and uh this normal would be about one okay so this is where our normal is sitting or this would be the length of our normal and then after that we create a 
line mesh uh, from a three dot line and then inside we add our line geometry and our line material okay here i'm going to create another box geometry this is the box geometry that we're going to use to mimic the rotation so you can give it these values another mesh standard uh, give it this color and then set the wireframe to false or you don't even have to add this value at all then after that then you can add the box to our scene and underneath here you can already set the position for our box and the z and x make z zero and x five and then over here i'm going to create a variable called sphere spawn pause now this is the spawn position for our sphere which will be our projectile so the sphere is our projectile so we want it to spawn in this position whatever value we're going to give this variable over here that's where our projectile will be spawned okay so next up uh, we're going to create a function called normal update over here i'll be taking the argument time and speed now this is not really necessary but the reason why i did this was that while i was conducting tests then i used it to to test some if some things work as i thought they do okay so i used it in this multiply scale over here instead of using one i used time time speed and this would basically elongate our line mesh okay which is our normal so it would basically stretch the normal but that was just for test purposes so you can leave it there and do tests yourself and play around with it but that's why it's there but it will also be used for other things okay so inside of here i create another array called normal indices and then we're going to use our line mesh geometry then we're going to create another variable called normals and this is where i'm going to access our normal information so it's similar to what i did over here i'm repeating the same thing again the reason why i'm doing this again is so that i can use this inside of our render function so i'm going to put it in here so that this information can keep on updating and when this information updates then i can then pass it on to our line mesh so yeah i could have actually done it in a different way um i just actually realized now when i look at it that yeah i could have actually done it in a different way but that's something for another time so then i'm gonna then take our variable that we created our fear spawn position and this will be based on this normal in this index over here so the so the position of this normal will be our place where we will spawn our projectile and then after that then we go to our line mesh and then we set our points using the mesh position and using the normal indices once again so if you're trying to understand what is happening i mean first we created our line mesh and then we created it according to these values over here so now inside of this function we're repeating the same thing but only now it will be updated because this will be called inside of our render function okay so now we're going to create some variables that we're going to use we're going to create our position our quaternion and then we're going to create bullet which will be our projectile and then we're going to create a boolean called fire and then next i'm going to create a couple of events so on click this is what i want to do position will be equal to mesh and then we're going to use the get world direction method and inside we're going to pass it a new vector 3 okay and then here on mouse down then i will create our bullet so this will be created from a sphere using a mesh basic material and then once that's done then i will add that to our scene and then i will set fire to true so basically when i press down then this is the fire position and then on mouse up this is where i set fire to false and then down here then we're going to add our line actually we're going to make our matrix auto update to false for our line mesh and then after that then we add our line mesh to our scene so just over our render function i'm going to create a variable called t and this will be our time okay first we're going to rotate our mesh and then second we're going to take our quaternion or our quad variable and we're going to make it equal to our mesh's quaternion values then once that is done then we're going to, we're going to take our box and then we're going to set the rotation from this quaternion using this variable and then just underneath that then we're going to run our normal update function and then we're going to use time and speed inside okay so after that then um, we're going to create an if statement and inside we're going to we're going to be using our position so we're going to check if position is true then we're going to go inside and inside we're going to check if bullet is true and then we're going to go inside and then inside we check if fire is true and if fire is true then time will be equal to zero 
So what this is doing is just basically setting the time new again. That's why when I fire the projectiles, then when, when I fire another one, then the one that I fired before stops because the time is now renewed. So now it's standing still. So basically it's just running the time for the current projectile. That's what's happening. But of course, in a different situation, you would have to create a different setup, but I just created it this way just to illustrate the point. And so this is what would happen if fire is true, then we set time to zero. And then only after that, then we set the position of our bullet uh, according to this position value. And this position value will be the position of our world direction, okay? So the mesh is world direction. So it's going to take that value. And so we'll take that and then we'll multiply scalar using time and speed. Oh yeah, and my, my, my bad. Um, another thing that I forgot is to actually set to declare the variables, um, time and speed. I just realized now you can go back up, but it doesn't really matter where you put it. But, um, just to make things easy, just follow along just over this, um, sphere spawn position here, we're going to declare our time variable and our speed variable. And coming back here, um, please get, get rid of this over here. Yes, I just realized that that is actually not doing anything. So my apologies. So there we go. So, okay. So now we just declared our time and speed, and now we're using that inside of here. And we're also using it to multiply the scalar of this vector three over here, which is our meshes world direction. So this is the value that we're going to be using to animate our bullet. Okay, so I think that's about it. So now we're going to run and see how things are working. Okay, well, I think I'm already running my server, so I'm going to go. Okay, so here we are. These are the two objects that we just created. So this is our line mesh, the green part, which is representing our normal. And then this is the cube that is referencing this quaternion value. This over here. This is what we're using to rotate this box over here. Okay. So we're using this value to rotate this box. So that is why the purple box is rotating. Okay. So now we can begin to fire our projectiles. As you can see, they're firing in the direction facing forward. And the relevance of the quaternion value is that because I'm using spheres, then it's not easy to see the rotation of it. But if I was firing using boxes, for instance, or a cube, then the rotation would be different. So the reason why you would use this quaternion value is that as this cube is rotating, when you're firing, then it's also going to match the rotation. Okay. So it's just going to look like it's all facing in the same direction, depending on the geometry that you're using. So if you want to be firing a cube, but you don't want the cube that you're firing to be the, for the rotation to be in a different position to the one that you're firing from, then you would use the quaternion. I hope that makes sense. But yes, this is just a small illustration. It makes a big difference in terms of the possibility possibilities that it gives you but as an illustration yes it is just a minor example of what you can do so yeah this is just what i wanted to share with you and i will be building upon this and i will show you what we can do with this you know so now you just know how to shoot projectiles and then next time i'll keep it a surprise as to where we're going to take this so with all that said i just want to say thanks for tuning in and yet yeah, love and peace i will see you in the next one i'm out